All right, Thrill Seekers, that was the intro to Hotter Than Hell by Kiss, and my friend Steve Rifle taught me that, and it only took me like 20 tries to get it kind of almost right. But it has the secret Rolling Stones uh, guitar chord, which uh, Steve was kind enough to show me. Uh, So that was uh, the thrilling guitar intro for today. So... What I would like to talk to you about is another one of my FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions. And I feel like, I don't know, my memory is always crappy. I feel like I did address this question in a video recently, but I went through my videos uh, just before making this one and tried to figure out which video I might have talked about this in and I couldn't figure it out, so maybe I didn't talk about it, maybe I just thought I talked about it, but uh, in case I did talk about this already, and for regular viewers, apologies. What I want to talk to you about is breathing, how to breathe when you meditate. So I get this question really often about how should I breathe when I do zazen, how should I breathe when I meditate. And every time I get this question, basically lately, I go to this PDF file that I have on my laptop of Dogen's Eihei Koroku, Dogen's extensive record, and I pull up uh, Dharma Hall Discourse number 390, and I cut and paste that, and I send it to whoever is asking me the question, and I usually uh, provide a little bit of explanation of my own, of what I think it means. And I've done this so often, and I just did it uh, for, I think, two people recently uh, within the past week or so. I I thought, since I do this so frequently, maybe I'll make a video about it. And then the next time I get this question, uh, instead of going through and having to cut and paste the stuff from Eihei Koroku in the PDF, I'll just send them a link to this video. So maybe if you in the future are getting a link to this video, that's why because you asked a question I get often. So the, the question often comes up about how should I breathe when I am doing zazen? And this question is kind of um, slightly baffling to me. Uh, not completely baffling. Baffling is probably too strong of a word, but it's always a little bit, I, I don't get it, uh, because my teachers never made a big deal of how to breathe when doing zazen. I I think the instructions that Tim gave were just breathe normally, breathe like you normally do. I don't remember Nishijima Roshi ever giving any specific instructions about how to breathe. Uh, Sometimes teachers will tell you to count your breaths. Uh, Tim would sometimes tell people uh, to count their breaths, breaths, uh, sometimes not. Uh, I think this chapter I'm about to read will get into it, and if it doesn't, I'll mention that one after I read it. But uh, but that's about it. I don't know really what's out there, because I learned to do Zazen from my two teachers, who I mentioned so frequently, you know, people who watch this all the time have uh, have heard their names a, a lot, Tim McCarthy and Nishijima Roshi, Gudo Wafu Nishijima Roshi. And... Uh, that's about it. So I'm not out there looking at all the meditation manuals that are out there in the world, and I think people maybe sometimes presume I, I, I'm familiar with a lot of different meditation manuals that are out there in the world, and that I know all this stuff, because some of the questions I get sort of seem to presume that I have a lot of knowledge of different breathing techniques and meditation. I think maybe yoga uh, teachers might teach breathing techniques for meditation. I don't I'm not aware of, you know, I've, I've seen a, a number of other Zen teachers around, and I don't think it's really common in Zen, in the Zen tradition, to teach a breathing technique for meditation. So this must be something that's coming from other forms of meditation. So, what I thought I would do is I'll read you Dharma Hall Discourse number 390, 
which shows up, as I said, in Dogen's extensive record, Eihei Kōroku, translated by Taigen Dan Layton and Shōhaku Okumura. This is the only full translation I know of of this work. This is Dogen's other major work, other than Shōbo Genzo. And it is a collection of talks that he gave mostly very short talks, and I think there's some poetry and stuff in here in the back, but it mostly consists of very short talks that he gave to his monks when he was, mostly when he was at uh, a uh, Heiji temple. So it's quite different from Shobo Genzo, and even though the the lectures themselves tend to be shorter, the pieces tend to be on average much, much shorter than the ones in Shobo Genzo, which might lead one to believe that they're going to be easier. I find them, in general, much more difficult because, uh, because of their brevity. It, it tends, they, they tend to be kind of like, what? <laughs> you know, it's just like he just says a few things and then uh, gets off stage very quickly. Often, often these are just like a paragraph long. The one I'm going to read to you is uh, just a couple of paragraphs. But this one is actually one of the more clear ones, one of the more easier, one of the more easier to understand ones. Is that good English? I don't know. But I'm going to read it to you. Uh, I'm going to read most of it to you. I'm going to leave off the second half of it and let you read the second half of it for yourself because the, the first half of it is very straightforward. The second half of it is quite philosophical and difficult, and uh, we'll just leave that for another day. But the first half of it is quite simple, I think, uh, and doesn't need a lot of explanation, but I think it will need a little bit of explanation. So here goes. Let me just read it to you. They title it How to Breathe in Zazen, and the uh, titles of all of these were given by the translators. Dogen did not give any of these titles. Uh, they're numbered. I'm not even sure if Dogen gave them numbers, but uh, they, they certainly did not have titles in the original version, but they gave it the title How to Breathe in Zazen, and it's, I think, a good title. So here we go. In the Zazen of Patched Robed Monks, First, you should sit correctly with upright posture. Then, regulate your breath and settle your mind. In the lesser vehicle, originally there were two gateways. The lesser vehicle means so-called Hinayana Buddhism, which means early Buddhism, and it's a sort of pejorative term given by followers of Mahayana Buddhism, of which Dogen was one of the later sort of what they the Mahayana Buddhists considered to be more advanced Buddhism. So he says in the lesser vehicle, originally there were two gateways, uh, gateways to practice, uh, which were counting breaths and contemplating impurity. They would actually contemplate the impurity of their body and, and all this stuff. If you read the Theravada scriptures uh, you, in the Pali Canon, you can find a lot of this stuff. I'm not too well versed in it because, as Dogen says, it's part of that Theravada stuff, and in Mahayana it's usually not practiced. He goes on. In the lesser vehicle, people used counting to regulate their breath. However, the Buddha ancestors' engaging of the way always differed from the lesser vehicle. A Buddha ancestor said, even if you arouse the mind of a leprous wild fox, never practice the self-regulation of the two vehicles. So this arousing the mind of a, a leprous wild fox, I take to mean even if your mind is going crazy cuckoo, cocoa puffs, uh, don't count your breath. And, and this is... Uh, a bit contrary to the advice I first heard from Tim, my first teacher, which was that one of the ways you can kind of uh, ease into Zazen practices if your mind is going cuckoo crazy is to count your breaths. So this is the, the technique that he taught uh, to some students, including me, uh, was that if, if you're just like having a hard time doing zazen because you're, you're, just, you're just thinking about too much and you're getting too distracted, then you can count your breaths. And what you do is silently count the exhaled breaths one to ten. So one, two, silently three. So just count the breaths as they go out, and when you get to ten, start over again. Now, Dogen is saying, even if your mind is going completely wild and crazy, 
don't do that. And I think the reason that he's saying that is, and I discovered this through doing it, is that that becomes another distraction. It's just, it's just replacing one form of thought with another form of thought. So you're just engaging thought again in a different way. It's, it's a kind of an easier thought to engage with, is the thought of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is a very non- interesting sort of thought to engage with and so it's a little less distracting than thinking about uh, I don't know whatever it is that's distracting you but it's still engaging in thought so best to just let go or just let it happen that's what Dogen is saying the two vehicles refer to such as the school of the four-part Vinaya and the Abhidharma Kosa school which have spread in the world these days and those are just two, two different schools of Buddhism. We don't need to worry about that too much. In the Mahayana, there is also a method for regulating breath. Oh, okay, let's, let's hear what the Mahayana method for regulating breath is, Dogen. Okay. Which is, knowing that one breath is long, another breath is short. The breath reaches the Tanden and comes up from the Tanden. And their definition here for Tanden is, uh, Tanden is originally a Taoist, alchemical, and yogic term referring to the center of energy and vitality in the lower abdomen, about two and a half inches below the navel. So basically the diaphragm. I I'm not sure why we have to get all mystical and woolly about the Tanden, because Tanden basically refers to the diaphragm, but okay, it's kind of a mystical idea of the diaphragm as a mystical sort of thing. Although exhale and inhale differ, both of them occur depending on the Tanden. Well, that, that's what the diaphragm does. Impermanence is easy to clarify and regulating the mind is easy to accomplish. That's what Dogen says. And yeah, he's saying just don't worry about it. Just let the in-breath be the in-breath, let the out-breath be the out-breath. One is long, one is short, it, it doesn't matter. Just You can pay attention to them, notice which one is long, which one is short, but don't obsess too much about it. That's what I get from that. Uh, here we go, uh, more Dogen. My late teacher, Tian Tong Rujing, said, Breath enters and reaches the Tanden, and yet there is no place from which it comes. Therefore, it is neither long nor short. Breath emerges from the Tanden, and yet there is nowhere it goes. Therefore, it is neither short nor long. My late teacher said it like that. Suppose someone were to ask Ehe, me. He does this stuff. He refers to himself in the third person a lot. Suppose someone were to ask me, is what he's saying. Master, how would you regulate your breath? I would simply say to him, Although it is not the great vehicle, Mahayana, it differs from the lesser vehicle. Although it is not the lesser vehicle, it differs from the great vehicle. Okay. Suppose that person inquired again, ultimately what is it? I would say to him, exhale and inhale are neither long nor short. And that's where he leaves things. He does, he, he kind of goes on for a little bit longer in that section, but the other part doesn't have that much to do with breath. So that's why I'm uh, leaving that part for another day. But basically that's what he says about breath. So there's no, there's no technique. There's nothing you're supposed to do. And I got into this uh, kind of weird uh, online conversation with somebody who I was basically trying to tell him look, just just breathe normally. And and I, I, I <laughs> seem to not be able to get through to this poor guy uh, because every time I would say, breathe normally, it was like another, yeah, but, uh, you know, and then this other thing about what, what if this happened, what is that? The, the deal is just breathe normally. So don't obsess about your breath. Don't worry about your breath. Just breathe normally. If you're sitting upright, and I'm trying to, yeah, you, know, you can't see my whole body on the video, but I'm trying to sit with my little mudra and everything. If you're sitting upright, straight up, it, it kind of provides a good balance, I suppose, of the body and allows the diaphragm room to move. 
and you should be able to kind of breathe in and out in a very relaxed way so you don't have to worry too much about your breath it, it'll take care of itself you know that's the remarkable thing about breathing it just you breathe in you breathe out you don't have to think about it very much uh, whales and dolphins apparently have to think about breathing because they go underwater and uh, and they can uh, breathe uh, voluntarily uh, unlike human beings we'll just uh, we don't our breath is involuntary. I mean, we can voluntarily breathe if we want to, but basically it's involuntary. It just happens. So just let it happen. You don't, you don't worry about the breath uh, that much. And even though phrases like regulating the breath do come up in Zen, it doesn't really mean that much. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, it meaning like there, there's some great hidden Thing. There's some great hidden technique that you've missed out on. You know, if you see the words regulating the breath, that, uh, that you, okay, what's the technique? What's the thing that I have to do? What, what, should, what, should, I, what should I do about the breath? Should I breathe in like this? And, you know, the, the questions I get are, are just, uh, they, they're just endless sometimes. Like, like that guy I was telling you about, he had endless questions. Uh, every time I would just say, no, just breathe normally. And then you have another version of, of the same question of, of what about uh, the, the, this and that? And I, I can't even remember what the questions were. So just breathe normally. That's, that's basically the, the technique. And as far as counting the breath, my own experience has been that, as I said, when I first started sitting zazen, I would do the breath counting thing a lot because I... I I started when I was a teenager, and so when one is a teenager, one's mind is especially overactive. I think mine may have been more overactive than than even a regular teenager. I was just like bursting with like, ah, you know, this stuff going on in my head. And so counting the breath seemed to help uh, kind of um, give me something else to think about. And it seemed to help, and it wasn't until uh, you know, I'd been doing that for 10 years, and then I got to Japan, and I started uh, studying with Nishijima Roshi, and he uh, brought up this thing from Ehe Koroku and the leprous wild fox thing, and I thought, oh, maybe I should stop counting my breath. And what I found is that even now, I will start automatically counting my breath without thinking about the fact that I'm counting my breath. I just sort of do it because I, I, it's, it's become habitual. And, and I think, oh, that's, you know, maybe that's part of the problem. You know, you just, it becomes a habitual thing. It becomes a little bit of a crutch. And it's, it's probably not the worst thing you could do. You know, it, I don't think it's a terrible, terrible thing. But as Dogen says, maybe it's better to just let your thoughts be wild than to count your breath. When you notice that your thoughts are going wild, you will also notice that everything else has kind of gone screwy. And this is, this is was, was what Nishijima Roshi often recommended, was adjust your posture which is, I, I thought was great advice, because there was never a time, I've never found a time where my thoughts were going woolly and I was getting distracted and my posture was still good. Every time my thoughts were going wild, either my shoulders were going up or I was, often I was like leaning forward and crying. This is my personal thing. Some people um, apparently do this when their thoughts start going wild, their head starts to tilt up. That doesn't happen to me. But I've, I've heard other people talk about that, that their head starts to go up. Um, so the posture will start to go wonky if, if your thoughts are going wonky. So if you notice your thoughts are going wonky, then go, oh, let's see what my posture is doing. You'll notice your posture is wrong and then, and then fix your posture. So that's what I do instead of worrying about the breath or anything. So I fix my posture. And if I have to fix my posture 40 times in a 40 minute sitting, then that's just uh, how it is. So there you go. That is how to breathe during meditation. So I hope you learned something uh, and I hope that helps. And I hope that helps all the people in the future who I mail the link to this video to. Anyway, if you want to help me out, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info 
patreon.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only ways of making a living, and I appreciate your support. But as always, you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Hey, Ziggy. Are you busy sleeping? Okay, I won't bug you. I'll just go edit the video. See you later.